Welcome back. I am Justin, and this is Blender Frenzy, of course, and we're going to continue our little borderline animation. If you haven't seen the other videos, go check them out now. This is going to be a continuation. Uh, we're going to render out our animation into a an image sequence so that we can overlay it onto a video. So uh, let's get started. Um, make myself a little small bubble head over here. So if I press play, uh, we can see our animation that we made last time. Um, so this, what it looks like. So, all right, I'm going to press pause and I could come up here to the rendered tab, but instead, uh, I'm actually going to, uh, use the animation tab because it has pretty much er everything that I want on the screen, uh, aside from a couple changes, which I'll show you. So I'm just going to duplicate this by right clicking on it and then choosing duplicate and then you can see it duplicates that tab. I'm gonna double click in here and type border render. You can type in what, whatever you want. Um, and now it's uh, pretty much the same, uh, except for we gotta change this back to uh, the rendered viewport shading mode over here. And then this one, I don't want to be the 3D view. So I'm gonna come up to the header in this corner for the editor type, I'm gonna click that and choose image editor. And then up here in the drop down, I'm going to choose render result. And I'm going to scroll out. Uh, let's go to our render properties. No, sorry, the uh, output properties here and our dimensions. And I'm just going to make sure that the dimensions are going to be what I want for my final dimensions, which is 1920 by 1080 at 100%. So that looks good. And let's scratch my itch here on my head. <laughs> and yeah, that's not you don't have to follow along. I mean, if your head itches, you can do the same thing. But anyway, sorry. Uh, okay. So now you can't see anything here yet, obviously, because we haven't rendered anything. So to do that, you can either come up over here to where it says rendered and render image. Or you can just hit F12. And now you see these should look identical. So we have our um, uh, 3D viewport here. And then we have our render result. And you can see the difference if I scroll in. This is actually a uh, rasterized. You can see the edges are rasterized there, which means that they're a little you know, blocky image. And if I scroll in over here in our 3D viewport, you can see that that's really smooth. So um, that's kind of uh, one of the ways you can tell that this is an image. Uh, I can also save it as an image if I just want to save this image. And that is save, uh, go to image and then save as or shift S. You can save that as and you can just save that to wherever on your computer. Um, if you come over here to the settings up here and actually, you know what? I'm going to change my mouse. I just, I wanted to try this out. I've got a thing called, uh, well, I'm using Linux. And so if, uh, I'm using the GNOME desktop and there's a thing called gnome tweaks and I'm just going to change my cursor to red glass there and I'll, I'm just going to test this out you guys can tell me uh, if you like this or not um, but this is just so you can see my mouse a little bit easier instead of just kind of this little black dot going around but now you can kind of see that a little bit uh, uh, contrasted on the background so up here uh, you can choose your settings and you can also press the in key the in in like nancy as i always say but you can choose your format here uh jpeg png tiff targa bmp all of that stuff uh png has the alpha so that's the what i'm going to be using um, you can also change uh black and white color and color uh, with your alpha channel which is your transparency uh, but i don't want to save a single image so i'm going to escape out of this now uh, you can notice we, uh, I just talked about the alpha channel, the transparency, but right now we don't have a transparent background. We have a gray background and we don't want that because uh, at least I want to be able to overlay the border animation and text on top of either a picture or background or some sort of video. So we need a transparent background and it's very easy to do that. So come over here to your uh, render settings or your render properties tab. Uh, down here where it says film you can see this transparent check that and boom now you can see our transparent background which is represented with a gray checkerboard background which is uh, very common in a lot of uh, programs so um but it didn't update here because we haven't rendered it yet so i'm just going to press f12 to do another render and 
boom, now we can see that these are the exact same thing. And that's going to be really important. So um, make sure uh, they do look the same. Now, if the colors are off, maybe a little bit. Uh, and I don't know if that is just my computer, if the color does kind of look off. Um, but what you can do is uh, come over to your render properties all the way down to color management. Just make sure uh, your display device is sRGB, your view transform is standard, your look is none, exposure is zero, and gamma is one. You can also uh, click on each of these, so the borderline and then the material properties over here. So map borderline, your strength is at one and it's at on emission. Same thing with the text. If I select the text, our matte text, we want emission, we want our color to be fully white. You can see if I change that here and then um, the strength to be one. Now it does look, this does look brighter for some reason. Okay, yeah, so I'm not entirely sure uh, what the color difference is here. I mean, maybe you can't see it. Maybe it's just, uh, maybe it's just my eyes are on my screen here. But anyway, uh, that is what your settings should be for the materials. And the uh, other thing that I was going to say is that we want to make sure that each of the frames, or not each of them, but just go to like your random frames. And that, so like frame 15 here, uh, what we see in our render preview mode should be in our render mode here. So F12, these should be the same. And then we can kind of test some of the other ones like this, F12. And there we go. So yeah, I just uh, it's always a good idea just to make sure that you're you're matching here, at least for a few frames. I like to do a few frames at the beginning, middle, and end. You don't have to do all of them. But uh, let's do our full one here, and F12. Alrighty, so that looks good here as far as matching. Um, the next thing I wanna do is, if you notice, if I play this through, you can see um, once, the animation finishes here from 30 frame 38 to frame 60 i have the exact same image so it's going to render this image out over and over and over again which is a waste of space and a waste of time so um there is a way because we're going to be putting this in an overlay in the video editor eventually so there is a way to extend that end out without having to create um multiple uh renders of the same image or duplicates of the same image. So what I'm going to do is go to the last frame, the last keyframe in our animation, and we're going to make this the last frame. So I could, that's, there's a couple ways I can do that. With my mouse hovering over here, uh, over the timeline, I can press Control end and that will set the end frame wherever the current frame is. I could also uh, come down here and type in end as 38, enter, or I could uh, copy this from here. This is our current frame. So hover over there, press Control C, and then press Control V to paste that there. Okay, I'm just gonna adjust this a little bit, middle mouse to move this in and then scroll in. And another thing, if you can't see any of your, your uh, keyframes, and you're like, where is everything? Um, it's just click middle click and drag and just keep dragging down all the way until you can see something and if that doesn't work just make sure your filters aren't on um sometimes the summary is on and you have you have filters as selected and um things like that so uh just make sure all those are off i don't like the summary that's just personal preference but Anyway, so now we have frame 1 to 38, and if I play that, each frame is going to be different. So uh, an image, uh, they were, they're all different images. You don't have a duplicate image rendering over and over, which is what we want. Okay, so we are about ready to render this image or the sequence. So go over to our output tab again and make sure your dimensions are how you want them. So again, mine was 1920 by 1080, which is what I wanted. 100% frame range is your choice. Uh, I choose 24 frames per second. I'm gonna close that. As far as our output goes, you can put this anywhere. I like to put it in the same folder that my blend files are in. So, um, well, not the same folder, but I like to start there. So to do that, press double forward slash. 
double forward slash means that that is where your current blender file that you're working on is in and then i'm going to type imseq uh, for image sequence another forward slash to make that a folder and then i'm going to type in a name border underscore line underscore o1 you can type in anything of course but this is for our borderline image sequence one uh, which is our first attempt and i'm going to do another forward slash making that a folder so inside the borderline underscore o1 that's going to contain all of our O1 images. So you can either type in O1 or you can just type that again, border underscore line underscore O1, and then another underscore and enter. And let me explain this here. So we have a image sequence folder, and then we have a borderline, borderline one folder. And then inside that we have the file name. So all of the image sequences are, all of the images are gonna be starting with the name borderline or borderlin. No, borderline and enter borderline one underscore and the reason I have the underscore is to separate the frame range so if I have file extensions checked here which is what I want it's going to put the file extension which is going to be our PNG but it's also going to put the frame range so it's going to be like 0001 to 0038 or something like that but if you don't have a separator it's going to smash that number that frame range right up to your name so it's just something I like to do. Um, I'm going to uncheck overwrite for now uh, for the file format. You can choose anything, but uh, you can't, if you want it to overlay on something, if you want that alpha channel, you have to choose a file format that has an alpha channel. And you can see that here with, we have black and white color and then color with an alpha RGB, which is red, green, and blue, and then alpha. I'm gonna leave everything else the same. And then I'm going to save this uh, as another iteration. Uh, you can save it as whatever you want but i think we are ready to go so i'm going to now press Control f12 or if you come up here to, again to render render animation is Control f12 so f12 is just the single image and uh, the whole frame range is going to be Control f12 so I'll click that and now if i come over to my folder um, and we go to our image sequence you can see I now have an image sequence folder and in that I have a borderline 01 folder and in there you can see I have the frame range um, going I don't know why it didn't start at frame one so I, it started at frame two for some reason but you can see it's uh, rendering each of them out and if I come over here to show the pictures you can see or the little thumbnails you can see what it's rendering. If I come back over to Blender, uh, it's just going through frame by frame rendering each of those. So yeah, this is gonna go faster or slower depending on uh, the speed of your computer, your graphics card, the way you have things set up. If you notice down at the bottom, it says render 98%. It's gonna start at 98% and that's just because, or at least it does with mine. Um, that's because it's telling you how much of that single image is rendered. So uh, since it only takes about a second or two to render each frame, um, then, or I guess for me, it looks like it's taking three seconds, a little over three seconds for each frame to render, uh, then, um, yeah, so it's always kind of at 98%, which isn't really useful, and I don't like that, because it's like, well, how long should I guess for my... <laughs> I have to guess, basically. Um, and so right now, it's like, okay, some some are taking... If I look up here, you can see frame 28 took uh, four seconds, or frame 29 took four seconds to render. I just have to guess. I have to calculate. Uh, the frame range plus the time it takes to render each frame. And I'm sure um, I could optimize this somehow. Um, if you have any ideas of how I would be able to optimize this, uh, please let me know um, because right now it's it's going really slow. And that's probably also because I have other things running. Uh, but it seemed like when I practiced with this earlier, uh, it didn't render this slowly. Okay, so now it's done, and we go back over here, and we can see all of our, uh, let's see, can I refresh? Yeah, let's refresh here. Did this not work? Okay, there we go. All right, so there we can see our animation going from start to finish there, from frame 1 to 38, 
And that is it. So um, if we uh, double, let's just kind of pick one here in the middle, double click on that. And you can see um, the black background, but I can change that, I think, in my preferences. Uh, my background transparent as a checker pattern. See, there we go. So you can see uh, what that looks like. Okay, so uh, that is our image sequence. And now we have the image sequence. Next video, we're going to overlay it on uh, to some sort of background. And it can be any background. And we'll probably play around with it a little bit to see what we come up with. But if you want an easier way to create these borderline animations, check out my Belinda Frenzies courses. And I will show you a little promo for that now. If you want an easier way to create these borders, you can use the Easy Borders rig that I created specifically for creating quick 2D borderline animation for things like titles and name tags for your videos. The rig has drag and drop handle controls, sliders, and color swatches to quickly adjust the size, position, and color of the border and fill. You can also easily make text appear and disappear with the vanish controls. Everything is on one screen, so you don't have to keep switching back and forth between panels and settings, and there are no add-ons required. The rig is just contained in a regular blend file, which means that it's ready to go straight out of the box. So if you're interested, head on over to my new course platform at courses.blenderfrenzy.com, where you can watch the welcome video and check out the Easy Borders course and expansion pack. Just click on one of the course options to see what's all included, plus a full description of the course. The course contains six modules, including a full introduction and Blender setup for those who are not yet familiar with Blender, two quick start modules to get you animating your first easy border in just minutes, a beginner's animation module, and much, much more. Right now, Easy Borders is still in early access, which means it's 50% off the normal price. This is only for a limited time, so if this is something that interests you and you'd like to show your support, come on and get it while the offer still stands. Just go to courses.blenderfrenzy.com and click on the course and then click add to cart. It is an online course, so create a new account and then you will have the option to purchase any of the courses that are offered. So I'm excited and I can't wait to see you there.